The title of this presentation is The 936 Game Out and the New Information. It is a two-part follow-up to the Lead Up to the Rapture event series. And this first part will focus on explaining the term game out, as well as provide insights into the benefits of the 936 game out experience provided for those who participated in it. I'm Nancy, and this is Jetson. We're going to be using an interview style format to get the whole set of information out efficiently and hopefully in an engaging way. Judson, I would love it if you could take us back to the beginnings of your journey with Q. Oh, well, that will be a good place to start. Well, in the spring of 2018, I was encouraged by a fellow channel owner to look into the 17th letter project and I immediately resonated with the truth that was being posted out there. And then soon after, I became aware of a chap named 107, who was appearing on all the popular YouTube channels, predominantly the Jennifer Mack channel. And he was sharing details about the 17 team and the military nature of that operation, as well as the parallels of current events with Old Testament Bible stories. And he was telling them as if he'd been there. That really captured my attention. So 107 provided the clear connection for you to make between the 17 movement and the Bible. Once you realized that powerful connection, where did you go from there? Well, along with so many patriots, I took the military oath with General Flynn. And that got me viewing the movement as a patriotic operation that I could actually participate in. And this eventually led me to view myself as a soldier in God's earthly army as well as to viewing Jesus as the true king of this realm. It was at that point that Jesus' role in my life shifted to military leader. Judson, that had to be a huge revelation for you. Military suggests war. How does that work in this regard? Well, as you know, Ephesians 6 shows up in the post many times, 16 times, I think. And though many patriots still do not understand that we are at war and that it's a spiritual war, I was eventually able to see that God is training up an earthly army to fight and win this war. You know, planning and preparing are huge requirements for success in winning a war. Precisely. The gent whose home I was boarding at while writing and producing the lead up to the Rapture event series was actually in the Air Force for 10 years. After 9-3 came and went and I was seeking guidance about how to sort things, I asked him if he'd ever been subjected to a scheduled operation that turned out to be a training exercise. He not only confirmed it as fact, but he added that the military is always ordering operations that are game outs or simulations. And neither those in charge nor the soldiers know if the op is real until the specters arrive at the end to let them know if they passed or failed. Now that term game out as a form of preparation is what I was given so I could sort what happened with what I now refer to as the 936 game out experience. That is the rapture event was gamed out 
through my YouTube and Rumble channels. And I've since learned that same date was ganged out through other credible channels as well. Doesn't 107 support the idea of gaming out? Yes, uh, besides one's many references to our military constantly using supercomputers to predict what the enemy's moves might lead to, in his 2020 book, Kid by the Side of the Road, Juan says this about the purpose of gaming things out. So one is saying that the reason you game something out is so the players can learn what they need to know to go to the next level. Absolutely. So after 936 came and went, I was told that a certain segment of Patriots needed that experience to both prepare for and actually get to the next stage in the 17 operation. Just as with military war games, the 936 game out was carried out as preparation for a real operation. And if you use logical thinking, it's rather easy to see that when you have only one shot and the entire human race is at stake, you go beyond the use of computers. You game it out. Further logic tells you that you don't waste time gaming something out if there's no real operation associated with it. Many sources, both biblical and military, point to the importance of preparation time and planning. In short, what's the message regarding that? Well, any military general will tell you that preparation time is never wasted time. Let's hear what Juan has to say about it, both back in 2014 and just last week. When you think you're prepared and then you go take a week or a weekend and just try it, you know, for practice, and then you realize, oh my gosh, I didn't think of this, I don't have that, I don't have this other thing, and if I needed this, I wouldn't know how to do that, you know, it could be as simple as the well not working. You know, right. some little thing, and, and you all of a sudden find out just how unprepared you are. Okay, at a spiritual level, you're going to rely on your church. Well, what if your church, everybody in there is in the same boat you are? Or worse, you're going to rely on a building? You can't get to the building. The building's 15 miles away because that's where you go to church at, and the gas, you can't afford to get there. Uh, right. Your internet's down. You can't communicate with your buddy to tell him how horrible it is and he's 10 miles away. Or get him to come over and give you a hand because he's busy dealing with his own crisis. You call 911 and you get a busy signal. You call 911 spiritually and you haven't talked to God directly because you talk to God because you hear him from, from the pastor. You haven't even gotten to where you deal with God directly on a daily basis. You don't even know where in his word is the scripture that applies that to jars the right thought in your mind because you don't you're not engaging God directly. You're doing it through edifices, through through filters, through people. And that's what this moment is all about. We have this moment to rethink. Think again about where you're at and what all of these things are actually telling us. The sky is changing color. The clouds are turning red. It tells a sailor certain things are coming based on whether it's in morning or night, what they look like. Well, you can see it. Okay, so 
time to get ready. What was the message in the Super Bowl that the Olympics were sending to us? Prepare, oh. prepare, prepare. Even the bad yeah, guys are telling you, get ready. <laughs> okay? Even the yeah. bad guys are telling you to get ready. People need to understand we are in a very serious spiritual war. I don't need a, a healing crystal. Oh, yeah. I don't need yeah. anything. All yeah, I need is the blood of Christ. Power. Yes. You must understanding your authorities in Christ. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to forward to you a um, link to one mm -hmm. of the uh, uh, Curry Blake videos for your listeners, and they could just listen to it. He talks about some of these things yeah. with, with demons and entities and things like that. I think this is something that's worthwhile, especially at this moment in time. Yes. America yes. is under some type of siege. Yes. And there is a spiritual war for the heart of America, for the soul. Yes. Of America. And we're about to come into a near-death experience. I actually think that we will all see our lives pass before our eyes. Nine three six is now in the past. So why go into all this, Judson? The main reason I'm pointing all this out is because nothing has changed regarding the 13 events that will take place during the rapture event. This channel was given a date so that a game out of the event could be tested. And it was not just for those who orchestrated it, it was also for those who participated in it. So they could prepare themselves ahead of time for when the reptilian hack of human bodies does occur. You could literally compare what's to come with the story of when God sent the angel of death to Egypt. Yes. God did warn the Israelite slaves in Egypt that the angel of death was coming to kill all firstborn sons in the land. Yes, and the Israelites were told ahead of time. And in that case, they were even told how to prepare for it. In the 936 game out, each person had to devise their own plan to get prepared. So it makes sense that those who got the most out of the 936 experience are those who took the time to come up with a strategy to either stay clear of the enemy combatants or to prepare to fight them. That plan they devised is this new information this video is named for. And at some point in the near future, it will prove to be valuable intel for them. Jensen, the rapture story you were given is diametrically opposed to the official story, especially in relation to who is escaping and who is staying. Can you tell us more about that? That is another part of the new information. Who is going and who is staying? And in the story I was given, it's the saints and the 144,000 who are staying, while the bulk of humanity is relocated outside of the matrix. Now, of course, this idea was a shock to most everyone, but especially to those who consider themselves saints, because they're viewing having to stay behind for the Great Tribulation as a judgment from God, or even as a punishment. Well, I want to stress that staying behind for the Great Tribulation 
is neither a punishment nor a judgment on the saints. It's just that the heavenly realm has no 3D duality or polarized experiences in it. So this final battle that the saints will wage against the beast system will use the contrast of the matrix to upgrade the DNA of the angelic race with information that will be needed as eternity unfolds. But there's more to the idea than even this. First, most will agree that it's a tremendous honor to be here witnessing these last days that are prophesied throughout the Bible. Think of all the times the 17th letter post refer to this time right now as being biblical. It's like 17 is saying, all those prophecies will be fulfilled in your lifetime. And now I'm being told that those staying behind will be the most blessed of all because they'll get to witness everything. They'll be here to see the rise of the Antichrist. The New World Order beast system takes shape. The worldwide mandate of the mark of the beast. The appearance of the two witnesses in Jerusalem. As well as the appearance of Jesus, the true king of this realm, arriving in the clouds with great power and glory on a magnificent white stallion surrounded by hosts of his angelic army. Those who stay will witness the final judgment of the wicked or those who are knowingly choosing evil over good. They'll get a glimpse of the new Jerusalem and the Ark of the Covenant as described by John. And they'll experience their spirits and those of the martyred saints being ascended up to the clouds to join Jesus and his army. And at the end of the world, they'll experience exiting this system via the East Gate to the place Jesus went to prepare for them. Though the fact that the saints and the 144,000 are staying for the Great Tribulation is an extremely important piece of the new information. The 936 Game Out provided a segment of these two groups with advanced knowledge so they could prepare themselves and thus help others get prepared. And how timely this new information is, just as we've learned that the Antichrist figure predicted by Juan several years ago is moving into position to take power. So, if the saints and the 144,000 will be here with all those evil people, what will they be doing during those horrible three and a half years? God's sealed saints and the 144,000 will be safe while completing a collective mission for the heavenly realm. After the mission, their seal will be removed and most will be martyred. This is scriptural and it is not a punishment. It's merely the level of contrast needed to upgrade angelic DNA.
also, according to scripture, there's no need for those staying to be afraid of dying for disobeying the beast system. Those staying will definitely want to take note of those verses. So now that we no longer have a date as a marker, are there other signs we can be watching for that will warn us of the enemy's attack and thus the imminent rapture event? Juan has been telling us about two end game events, which are a financial collapse and the threat of a nuclear attack that are slated to occur before the rapture event. And I believe these markers will serve to herald the reptilian attack. Also, one of the most compelling proofs of the 936 date was the perfect alignment of the three heavenly bodies involved in kicking off the 13 events of the rapture event. So, if you're so inclined, you could be watching for an alignment of the moon, the sun, and Omnitok. You'd be watching for a perfectly straight alignment of all three. Thank you, Jetson. We're about to watch some clips of Yaakov Ramsel, a Jewish believer in Christ that you featured in several of your videos, including the Trump time travel series. Can you share with us how his work with the Hidden Bible Codes relates to the new information we've been discussing? I can, but he covers it so well in these clips. I'll just let him do the talking. The Bible is the Word of God. It is so awesome. There are several levels of interpretation. There is the simple level, read the book. There is the practical level for daily living. There is the prophetic level for future promises. And beyond that, the Jews say there is a secret level, the sowed level.
Well, we have one of the experts, one of the nation's experts with us today, Yaakov Ramsel, who has turned the theological community on its ear with finding the name of Jesus encoded at equidistant letter sequences throughout the Old Testament in the Hebrew language. Gary Stimmer and I are going to be talking with Yaakov Ramsel. Yaakov, thanks for being with us today. It is my pleasure, J.R. I appreciate it so much. You have dazzled us with Genesis 1-1. God has so encrypted his word, there's depth and height and width that we cannot possibly comprehend in this life what God has done with his precious word. God in his wisdom has placed throughout the first chapter of Genesis, taking the first letter and counting forward at variable uh, increments, but each at the same equidistant sequence spells created six separate times. Ooh, that corresponds with the six days of creation then, doesn't exactly it? Exactly right. That's There's amazing. only 1,671 letters in Genesis 1, the first chapter. What God has composed within that first chapter lays a foundation like the rule of first mention or the law of first mention for the rest of the scripture. Mm -hmm. And so it's a takeoff. Really, Genesis 1 is a takeoff for the whole divine plan of God throughout his entire work. Now, I did a complete analysis on Genesis 1, and I came up with at least 50 to 70 separate codes, starting with the first letter. And I thought that was phenomenal. That was something that was out of the realm of uh, my consciousness. In other words, somebody outside of our space and time had to construct this word in such a way that that event would take place. Uh, you have brought with you today uh, a, a particular coding study involving 17 letter intervals in Genesis, and uh, the story of redemption is told. The first code, it starts out every 17th letter, and this is recorded in Genesis 1, 24 through 31. Uh -huh. Those verses there. The first code starts out is Jehovah. And then the next code is light or Dane. It's Or Shevet. Uh -huh. And then the third code at 17 letter increments is created. And then we have the blood, Hadam, uh -huh. at every 17th letter. You see, God is painting a picture for us here. Yes. You know, it, it's so magnificent because then the next code comes out, Ha'amet, which means the truth. And then we have Hatava, which means the ark. This is the type of ark that Noah built mm -hmm. for rescue. And the temple is encoded there, Hehekal. Mm -hmm. And the eighth one that we have here at 17 letter increments is Malet Ish. It means man is rescued. Rescued from what? Well, the world became filled with sin. When the first sin came, then there was uh, rampant sin throughout the world as it is today. Mm, but here we see a picture that man will be rescued. And it goes on at 17, in the light. And every 17th letter also within there is Natal. Natal is a unique word.
It's a Hebrew word that can be translated directly as the rapture. It means to be rescued. It means to be suddenly jerked up or snatched up. And that's the meaning of that word. Okay. That's the Old Testament. Amazing. All this is in Genesis chapter 1. Yes. <laughs> in, uh, composed together uh -huh. in a compact area. At 17 letter intervals. Mm -hmm. In the order that you're giving them to. Yes. And this is certainly sod level stuff here. This is, this is above the regular interpretation of Scripture. This is the secret level that the rabbis talk about. Now, this caught up in Hebrew is fascinating. Tell us what it means and where you've been looking for it and what all you found. Caught up. Uh, the proper interpretation of this from the original Hebrew is the word is natsau, and it means to be suddenly removed, suddenly jerked up, rescued, and saved. You see, it's very synonymous with these terms. But so interesting, over in Isaiah 26, he says, Come, my people, enter into thy chambers. Yaakov has an insight concerning the flood and Noah. I'm going to read uh, the, the seventh chapter of Genesis, uh, uh, verse 6. And Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters was upon the earth. Now, this is the story of Noah and the ark. You know, it's so beautiful what God has placed in there. Every ninth letter, mm -hmm. this, this is awesome, every ninth letter spells the sons vrabot pela. Now this in English is many, many sons, multitudes of sons. Unnumberable. Escape. It's an innumerable company. Uh, I'd like for you to just tell us what you found at letter intervals in that Isaiah 26 passage that also speaks of the same thing the plain words speak You of. see, the Word of God ties together so uniquely from old to new, from chapter to chapter, from book to book. And so we have the same concept here in Isaiah 26 where at every sixth letter spells natsau. It means to be jerked up, raptured. It's exactly what it means. Wow. Not once. But every seventh letter also spells the same word. I think God is trying to tell us something. Yaakov's discovery of these hidden messages is truly miraculous. Judson, it's amazing. And what he found is a perfect complement to the story you've been given. 
You've presented a lot of information here and given us a lot to think about. Well, part two is just as packed. So stay tuned.